Hey guys, I'm Richard Beck. You're watching Beck's Armory, and today I'm gonna show you how to cut threads on your lathe. You're gonna need a internal thread cutting uh, tool. Now this is basically a boring bar with a insert. Now when you buy these inserts, um, they're not all the same. If you're gonna be cutting standard threads, you need to get a 60 degree insert and make sure you check uh, the smallest number uh, thread count that it can go, all right? The first time I did this, the one that I had bought did not go down to th uh, 10 threads per inch. The next thing that is important is to make sure this is set at 30 degrees. Now, why is that important? So, um, when you're cutting, you want to minimize vibration. If you have lots of vibration, your threads, they're gonna look like dog poop, right? So in order to uh, focus all of the cutting on the front edge of the uh, tool, instead of just pushing it straight in and cutting on both sides of the tool, you're going to pull the tool, um, you're gonna pull the slide up against only one side, right? So you can see here, when I crank this, what's happening there. See that motion right there? So every time when, uh, when I adjust this about five thou, I'm only, I'm pulling this direction, right? I'm not pulling this direction, I'm pulling at 30 degrees. Now, why is that important? Well, that's a 60 degree triangle there. And if I pull straight in, um, I'm gonna be cutting on both sides of the point. Cutting on both sides of the point is gonna make a lot more vibration. If you've ever noticed, when you go to plunge before you start your cut, that's when you're gonna get all the noise, the chatter, the vibration, and once you start cutting with your lathe, it gets a lot smoother, right? So we want the smoothness to get really high quality threads. So the last thing we wanna do is just plunge straight in. So is what we're gonna do is we are gonna pull this way at 30 degree angles and we're only gonna cut on one side of the tool when we're making these threads. Once again, we do not want to just plunge straight in. Also, all manual lathes are gonna have a little dial right here. Now, what this dial is, it makes sure that every time you start the threads, you're not cross-threading, right? So as it moves, you can see the dial turns. Now, on my lathe, if the first pass was on a three, as long as I'm on a whole number, um, I will main, I'll still be on the same exact threads. So I can be on one, two, you know, four. It doesn't matter as long as I'm on one of these whole numbers. Um, I engage um, with this lever right here. How you engage um, your half nut is probably different on every lathe. But the key is you don't have to wait for a full revolution. Um, if, you're, if you're cutting single point threads, as long as it's on a whole number, or if you have half marks, I don't have any half marks, but if I did, as long as on, you know, a half mark, that's good. So basically every 90 degrees, you can engage the half nut. Another tip, you'll notice it looks really dark in there. That is because I have used blue dicum. Um, so what you're gonna do, the benefit here is when you make a scratch pass, it's gonna be very visible. And then also you'll be able to see um, visually that you're not cross-threading. And I'm gonna thread until all the dicum is gone. That means um, the threads have come together into a point. And once that happens, I know that uh, you know I've cut deep enough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure the interior diameter, just to double check. So first of all, I need to figure out how far in I can actually go. Um, now, I wish I had a stop, but I don't have a stop. A lot of lathes have a stop, so you know exactly when to stop before crashing. So I'll crash at that point right there. Um, maybe is what I should do is adjust this gap so it basically goes to almost zero. I'd much rather crash into the face of this than hit my tool on the chuck. So I think I'm going to do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make so it crashes into both at the same time. So it's gonna hit that in the back, and my threads will be finished right about there. So 
So this is like a little sketchy, but I don't have a, uh, a stop that I can clamp on here. So it is what it is. Now, when you clamp your workpiece in, this is what I, this is how I do it. Just to, uh, make sure that I have some space so I don't crash into my chuck. I put parallels behind the part. I press it up against, and then I clamp it. Um, that way, I have a little bit of a gap here. It makes it just more forgiving. So I'm gonna turn my lathe down as slow as it goes, um, so I have more time to react and stop it before it crashes. Because 10 threads per inch is actually pretty aggressive. All right, so let's cut some threads. So it's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna bring it in and uh, first of all, make sure you have enough, you know, you don't want one of these uh, axes to be completely at the end of their travel because uh, you'd hate to have to move things and try to re-pick up the threads. So I'm gonna make sure that I have, I can come, yeah, see, look, I got plenty of travel there. And same with this guy. So let's go in there and I'm just gonna touch off. Now, you won't be able to see on this side unless you put your head all over here, but because there's dicum, as soon as this thing touches, um, we're gonna see a little line and I'm going real slow. And I might go back and forth a little bit. Um, just to be sure that I don't have a high spot. Turn it. Oh, I hear it. All right, you see it? So I'm touching. So at this point, I'm going to zero out my cross slide. Because that's going to be very important that I always come back to zero. Because at the end of the cut, I'm going to go forward, pull this out. Then I come here and I'm going to reset to zero. And then once I set this to zero, I'm going to then, you know, adjust this. So let's set this to zero as well. Everything is a zero, right? So we got zero and zero. And at this point, <sighs> I'm going to make a scratch cut. Now, over here, I'm gonna be on any of these whole numbers. So I'm gonna back it out, give myself a little bit more time to react. I'm gonna hit one. All right, so it's moving. I'm making my scratch cut and then I got to disengage this in time to not crash. All right. So you could hear it stopped cutting. Um, so that's when I yanked up on the handle. So now I'm going to move my cross slide this direction. And I'm going to go back. All right there, you can see we cut some threads. And I'm gonna reset this to zero. And then I can over here take like probably five thou adjustments with each one. Now, before I get crazy, I'm gonna double check to make sure these threads are actually 10 per inch. Cause there's nothing worse than wasting a piece you've spent a lot of time on. This is my handy dandy thread gauge. Now I picked this up from Amazon. Let's find 10, that's 11, 12, Right there, 10. So this is what 10 threads look like. And just to verify, this is the protective cap that goes on the spindle if you're using the, uh, the collet. So is what we can do here is put this in there just like this and uh, it allows you to double check to make sure you have the correct threads per inch. So basically you just line that up with the thread. This is easier to show on an external thread than it is an internal thread because you know, you'd have to be able to see inside there. So basically I'm gonna take this thread gauge and I'm gonna just kind of line it up, points on the scratches and those are dead on, right? So now I know um, that we're cutting the correct threads. 
So now that you know you're cutting the correct reds, and also you could even double check to make sure that you have enough depth right here, which I definitely do, so. Okay, let's continue on. At this point, the process doesn't change. I'll show you a couple reps, and then I'll show you the finished product. So, once again, I'm set zero here, and here I'm going to back it off. Oh wait, my backlash. So I had it pushed forward when I set that to zero. So I got to take the backlash out and then reset it. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it and we're gonna take a five thou pass. Um, the most important thing is uh, the half nut. If you take way too big of a cut, you'll just break the tip off. Um, if you engage this incorrectly, you're gonna ruin your part. So I like to have lots of room in case I, I, I like lots of room here in case I misengage this, I have time to unengage it and reset it. So right there, I'm engaged. I step to the other side of the camera so I can see here. And I'm, I'm listening as well, because the sound will change. And that'll tell me when to disengage the half nut. Right there, as soon as I heard it stop cutting, I disengage a half nut. Now I'm gonna go forward, and now I'm gonna move this way. And now I'm gonna go back to zero. And now I'm gonna go this way, another five thou. Now that I'm starting to cut, I wanna put some oil on there, or some thread cutting lubrication, just to give me a nicer finished product. Now, cutting faster is gonna give you a better finish, but if you're like me and you don't have a carriage stop, you don't wanna just smash and crash your lathe, so you're limited on how fast you can go. Okay, now I hope I don't make a mistake. Sometimes when I'm talking, I get distracted and I mess up. So, I'm gonna re-engage the half nut. I'm gonna go forward. I'm gonna crank it out. I'm gonna go back to zero. I'm gonna take another five thou and re engage half nut. Oops. forward, zero, oh wait, I went a whole pass, so make sure you don't do that, that would be bad, I went a hundred thousandths past, but yeah, I was at zero, but that was going to crash, so just because you're zero, always look and do a sanity check, because if you do that and you go, a hundred thousandths pass, you're gonna be at zero, but you're gonna break your tool and maybe move your part out of position and the whole thing would be scrapped. So let's take another pass. All right, I don't know if you can see or not, but these, this insert here, has three chipped tips. So those are three passes where I took a little bit more than I should have and the machine stalled. And when the machine stalls, it kind of goes backwards and it chips the top off. So um, as you continue to cut, you have to take less and less and less because you're getting more and more engagement on this leading edge here of the, um, the tool. This is my new uh, back plate center. I had to turn this inside diameter to two inches and one thou so that it can slip fit onto this, which is two inches. And you can see it's not fully threaded, so that's why this section here doesn't have any threads. So let's try it out. 
Slides on. Nice snug threads. And before it bottoms out, I mean, almost no movement at all. And then once it bottoms out, there she is. So now is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna face it and then turn the nose. Actually, I'll turn the whole thing down just so it looks nice. But then the nose of it, I'm gonna turn down so that it fits inside of here. And then, so that part will stick out. I'm gonna wait to turn that nose down completely till after I weld the big plate on. So I still have to cut a hole in this half inch piece and then weld this onto this. So let's take a little look Ugh. at how this is gonna work. This piece, is gonna go in a hole that I'm gonna cut. I might, I don't know if I'm gonna plasma cut this hole or if I'll just bore it. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think I should do? Should I plasma cut this hole and weld it onto here and then thread this onto there? Or should I make a precisely bored hole and then pop that in there, weld it on. So, I don't know, this is gonna actually stick through this plate um, by about 3 8 of an inch. And uh, so this has to go through this plate about 3 8 of an inch, then I'll weld it on. So we're getting closer to my uh, getting uh, this thing all into the modern era with the adjustable scroll clutch, scroll chuck. Man, I cannot say that for the life of me. Anyways, that's all I got for this time, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. I would love it. I'll see you next time.